Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get the best mixer streaming settings with OBS Studio for partners and non-partners. I'm going to explain everything in detail for the non-partners, and then once I'm finished, I'm going to go back and adjust the little things that partners would change. So first thing you're going to want to do before we start is install the links that I have provided below. We're going to be installing Visual Studio 2015 by Microsoft, and then you're going to have to search for your graphics card drivers and update those. Those are the first two things you got to do. And once you've done both of those things, we can continue. So I'm going to assume you have done both of those. First thing you're going to want to do in OBS is open up the settings. Then over here, we're going to go to audio, and then you're going to want to change your sample rate from 44.1 to 48 hertz. You're going to have to restart OBS after this, and that's fine. So we hit apply, hit OK, and go ahead and restart it. Once you've done this, let's open back up settings. And then you're going to go to your stream tab on the left. Stream type, make sure it's streaming services. Service, we're going to be doing Mixer FTL, which stands for faster than light. What this does is it actually gives you almost zero latency or very, very minimum latency, making your stream real time. So you can communicate with your fans and your streamers almost instantaneously, kind of like the right there. Rather than Twitch, you have to wait a good five to 10 seconds before they'll see one of your reactions or they'll see you respond to one of their chat messages. Once you've done that, go ahead and hit apply. And then let's go down to the video tab. So in video for non-partners, this is how we're going to be doing it. Base canvas resolution, we're gonna be matching that of what your monitor is and what the resolution you're playing your game is. So we're gonna assume it's a 1080p monitor and a 1080p game, and go ahead and choose 1920 by 1080. Output scaled resolution, we're gonna to wanna to drop that down to 720p, because that's gonna be a smaller file size for your fans to download while they're watching. A smaller file size makes it easier for fans of all sorts of internet connections to watch your stream. Next, for downscale filter, we're going to be choosing either Bicubic or Langzos. This depends basically on what kind of computer you have. If you have a really good motherboard and processor and graphics card, you can do this last one. If you have just an okay one, maybe like a GTX 1060 or something like that, then Bicubic's fine. Next is common FPS values. This is going to depend basically on how good your internet upload speed is. If you have a decent upload speed, maybe like 10-15 megabits upload, then you're going to want to do 30 frames per second. If you have a really good upload speed like gigabit internet, then you can go ahead and do 60. But I'm going to assume not everybody has gigabit, so we're just going to go with 30. Once you're done with that, go ahead and hit apply, and then make your way to the output tab. Click on that, go to output mode, make sure it's in advanced, and we're going to go under the streaming tab right here. So now encoder right here, since we don't want to use our processor, we're actually going to be choosing our graphics card. And this is for NVIDIA ones like GTX graphics cards and things like that. You're going to see this option. NVNC H264. So click that one. Make sure enforced streaming service encoder settings is checked. Rescale output. Again, if you're not partnered, you want to make sure you rescale your footage back down to 720p because that's going to create a smaller file size for your viewers to watch, making your stream more viewable to a wider audience, which will help get your fans quicker and keep them around. Rate control. There are a few good options here. CBR stands for constant bitrate. Basically, you give it a target bitrate, and it does its best to keep the stream right at that bitrate. That's a really good option, pretty popular among streamers. Then you can choose VBR, which is variable bitrate. This, basically, you tell it the same thing. You tell it a bitrate, and it does its best to keep it right at that bitrate. But it's allowed to fluctuate a little bit, depending on what goes on in the screen. And so, basically, if you choose VBR, it's going to make sure you have less buffering in your stream if you were to experience any kind of buffering anywhere. CQP stands for Constant Quantization Parameter. So, basically, it's really, really good quality depending on what number you try to choose on this scale. So, the scale is from 0 to 51, and 0 means it's the highest quality and biggest possible file size, and 51 means it's the lowest quality with the smallest file size. If you choose this option, you're going to have to have a really, really good graphics card and a really good internet connection because your graphics card is going to be put under a lot more pressure to produce a higher stream while simultaneously playing a game on it. So usually this is not the best one to stream in. And then lossless is exactly what it sounds like. It is literally the highest quality. It's basically choosing zero on the CQP scale. This one is pretty much near impossible to stream in because your viewers will just be nonstop buffering. They won't even get a clean stream because the average person's internet is not that good. So we're gonna go ahead and choose VBR. Next is bitrate. If you are not partnered and you have okay internet, 
then you want to choose around 2000 to 2500. It's going to provide a really good balance of quality and consistency. But if you have really good internet and you're not partnered, then you could do about 3000 to 3500. Keyframe interval, we want to keep that at one. Basically, if you do your research, one is going to be the best quality you can possibly produce for your stream. Two and three mean you're going to see some pixelation and smaller file sizes, but it's not going to look as good. Preset, these are pretty much self-explanatory. You can do high quality, which is really good. High performance, which reduces the quality, but reduces the strain on your graphics card, so you'll have better gameplay. Blu-ray is a very high quality. Low latency means it's going to be putting a bigger strain on your graphics card to provide a better stream. Low latency, high quality is basically the maximum amount of quality you can produce on your graphics card. So you will need a really good graphics card to use this one. Low latency, high performance is above average quality, but not the best, but also simply not the worst. It's in between medium and the best. So usually a really safe bet for graphics cards of decent quality, like a GTX 1060 or something, is high quality. Profile, higher main, you don't got to worry about these last ones. High is basically going to make your stream look better on computers. Main is basically going to reduce the quality of your stream a little bit because it is designed to display your stream on phones. So the average person watches a stream with a computer, so let's choose high. Level, keep this at auto. Two pass encoding, keep that there. GPU, keep that at zero. B frames, we want to keep that at one. One is for good graphics cards, the average graphics card, like a GTX 1060, and two means you have a really, really good graphics card. So this is going to provide some really good quality and consistency. Two is going to provide excellent quality, but it's going to increase the stress on your computer, make your file size bigger, and make your viewing experience a little bit worse for your average viewer. And those are the best mixer settings for non-partners if you want to encode using your graphics card. Now once you start streaming a lot on Mixer and you do become a partner, we're just going to change a little bit of settings right here. So let's say you get partnered. We want to go over here to video. Base canvas, we keep it at 1080p, but we change output scaled resolution to 1080p as well. Downscale filter, doesn't matter, we're not using that anymore, but let's keep it by cubic just to be safe. FPS, we can crank that up to 60. Now us doing this is going to make your file size a little bit bigger, so I hope you have a decent internet that at least uploads in 15 to 20 megabits per second. Once you've done that, hit apply. Let's go to output over here. The only two things we're going to be changing is rescale output. Uncheck that so your stream is 100% in 1080p. And then your rate control. If you have good internet, like 20 megabit upload speed, then we could crank that up to about 3500. Now if you have really good internet, like gigabit upload speed, we could even crank that up to 5000. And you could even go up to 10,000 if you want. But this is all dependent on your internet upload speed. You being partnered gives your viewers an option to pump down the quality. So you can basically crank this up to the specs of your machine and your internet. So anywhere from 3,500 to 5,000 is pretty average. Really good quality right there. And then potentially for preset, you can do low latency, high performance, which is pretty good. Or you could even try the other ones like Blu-ray or low latency, or even low latency, high quality if you have a really good graphics card. These you could play around with, but I'd keep mine still at high quality just to be safe. Everything else you'll keep it the same. And those right there would be the best mixer settings for partners using OBS.